Sure, absolutely. Um, the idea of why an individual or group communicates to another person, sometimes we're unaware of the purpose or the objective. And nobody, A, doesn't communicate. A, only communicates with B because A needs something back. They need a response. They, you know, the, the flowers are beautiful and smell sweet because they need the pollinators to come and pollinate the flowers. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, it, it's not com completely selfish, but it is the reason that we've learned to communicate with other people is to get our needs met. Babies cry because they have needs that need to be met. And it's, it's hardwired in our brains to send a message to somebody for the purpose of getting something back. Welcome everybody back to Beyond the Sale podcast. This week I'm so excited. I we have Kraz from Improv the Improvise Now with us. Kraz, uh, we I've taken his improv classes and his improv classes for culture and um, companies to establish better leadership, better culture, um, better communication inside of um, company culture. And I'm so excited to bring you guys him this week. Uh, Kraz, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, John. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Our pleasure. So, Kraz, I want to start off with, I found so much value with your training around communication and understanding and interpretation of communication, of improv as a medium for communication. Can you share with us how you got started with improv? How do you sure. see improv as that such thing? Uh, and um, how is it valuable with regards to someone being a better communicator and being more successful with communication? Sure. It, well, getting started ba back, it, we're, we start, we improv from the time we're born, basically. So uh, we're, everything is present and we're, it, we're improvising. We just don't know it, that we don't call it that. So then, then uh, I graduated with a theater degree at University of Florida with um, with acting and directing, but also heavy um, influence from psychology and whatnot. So I was doing improv back then, but I didn't formally start doing it till a little bit later. Um, and learning the the techniques that are required, the principles or practices, if you will, that that are literally practicable about improv. And it kind of crossed over into the job that I had, I have, which is um, taking care of. Uh, I work as a professional guardian and case manager uh, for for people with dementia and other um, other cognitive decline and di disabilities. And what I had found is that all of those techniques and practices that work at improv blended over in a really good way to help and facilitate communication with people who are coming from a different perspective, who have a shortcoming or have anosognosia, the inability to know what they don't know. And um, that translates into every communication that we have with everybody we work with. Everybody comes in with their own reality. And so practicing those techniques, what, what improv is to me is a playful practice of some basic techniques and principles that break down our conditioning or human conditioning of things that we habits we've picked up perhaps uh, egotistical internalized habits of thought that keep us from communicating with other people um, without becoming defensive or coming on the attack or coming in with our own agenda and a lot of things like that can be barriers to our listening and therefore our collaborative communication and innovation together so that's kind of a, wow. it, a rough yeah. nutshell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I love, I love that. So, um, so, and you mentioned something that improv can be. There are principles that can be practiced or, or practicable, and so Absolutely. through through reputation, through practicing those techniques, we can be get get better. Um, can you elaborate on that? I know that we there's a lot of training and and repetition that you do with regards sure. to games and that sort of thing. But how does that help? get um, us become more aware and better in communication. Right. So we get better through, in my opinion, play. 
there's there's two two ways we learn lessons I, I think well probably more than that but the two main lessons that we learn is through play like animals you know lion cubs and and everything we 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 learn our adult conditioning sometimes through play like 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 i said lion cubs do or or other things you can see them playing with stuff but they're learning how to handle the world around them you know through play and the other hard way to learn is through mistakes or failure with through something that we fail and have to go wow that really wasn't awesome how do i learn from that so we learn really quickly with failure and with playful practice um the the studying takes longer sitting in repetition and repetition but that that's also another way to do it so the playful pr practice of repetition of these techniques um will be ingrained in our conditioning a little bit better than the practices that we've learned that may be less beneficial to communication but more protective of our feelings inside you know to make us feel good about ourselves or to superior or anything like that so there, there, there are a few different techniques um you know a handful of them and depending on who you learn improv from uh they they basically cover a lot of the same ground and um if you want me to go into it now i can i can you know yeah i'd love, talking I would about love to this yeah, I love that. So, so through failure and through repetition, uh, and and also through success, we learn. And you said that yeah. failure actually is a great way to learn. And I love that. I think I think for, from what we do is we we all work on repetition a lot and practice to get better to build sure. habits to get better with the, our communication at, for, within business and our our leadership and and culture. Um, so I I that that I love that that um, juxtap juxtaposition there. But yeah, I'd love to hear some um, some tools that you guys use in yeah. with regards to getting better. Well, that rep repetition you're talking about, John, exactly. It's what you know, musicians use. They they practice scales and they practice notes and they they don't play them at the speed of the performance. They have to learn their chops first, right? They have to learn you know how to hold the string down or how uh, you know scales work together. And and it is a lot of practice and repetition. Not a lot of people have. Um, the natural natural ability for for communication. Some people are really good at, it and other people have to practice. Somebody said, I don't, I, I don't know who I'm quoting here, but it, it's like, uh, let me see if I get the quote right. It's like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard or something right. like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, so so you know that natural ability is sometimes overrun by that practice. You know you, that practice it, it it does matter, but this is a practice that's playful. And really, the most important thing about improv, see, some people think improv, when you, they hear about improv, is that you have to be fast and that you have to be funny. Those are the two kind of mis, you know, misunderstood no notes about improv because what happens with the practice of improv, then one has a more spacious presence that they can make choices in. And so when they make those choices, it looks like they're moving faster. It's kind of like the flash, you know, he seems to be moving at the same speed, but everybody else is slowed down. Right. So, you know, once you're in a sort of a focused presence, then those choices, and I'll get a little in more depth about that in a little bit, but the, the fact that when you can be super present, um, you can make choices and, and those choices seem to the people who are paying attention to be very, 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 very quick and funny. I love that. Yeah, yeah, and funny is another is another thing that people assume you have to be funny. Well, funny again is uh, just making a choice that's a little bit unique and off of what everybody's already thinking. So you know, there's the unexpected is usually more interesting in in a choice in improv than the standard answer. And the only way you'll know which fruit to pick is to be in that present. That present spaciousness, yeah. you know, the present I, moment. I love that, right? So, so as we, through practice, everything starts, It's uh, maybe, tell me if I'm right here. Through practice, everything starts to slow down. We It might seem like we're going faster. However, it's actually slowing down for us, and we can make conscious choices on how we want to respond in those situations, be it funny, being it, whatever we want. Um, right. But through that practice, we can slow down. And we start to see things and transcend the conversation. Is that, that's is absolutely that right? right. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely right. It and and any mindfulness practice, you know, that takes you into a metacognition. So you're you're actually thinking about thinking, or you're above the thought process where you can recognize thoughts coming in and choose the best way to move. 
Um, that c can come from any kind of uh, meditative mindfulness practice of presence you, you know and and those again people those are practicable so um some of the basic techniques let's we'll just be, go back into that that's a big one though about being present i i put it maybe i these aren't numbered in any order of importance they're all supposed to be done together you know but you'll often hear that the first rule of improv or the first i call it a principle or a practice is called yes and you hear that from every anybody who ever hears improv, they hear of yes and. And that's um that's the idea of that anybody's reality, when people are coming in, you accept that reality. You just automatically say yes to somebody else's reality. And that is one of the hardest things that people are conditioned not to do. Because the first thing when somebody brings something in is they churn it around their internal dialogue of like, well, how does this work? You know, they chew it up in their brain. Well, should I be offended about what they said? Or no, that, that won't work. You know, the instant thing is to judge the statement that came in, you know, instead of just accepting it as, oh yeah, okay, I hear, I'm hearing exactly what you, let me make sure I'm hearing exactly what you're saying. So that, that's the yes, the, the open acceptance of somebody's input. Now in improv, that's the point. The point of keeping an improv scene going is to make sure that we go along with this agreement, right? The minute we, the minute we negate uh, in a scene, we're pretty much slaying the scene, stopping it dead in, our, in its tracks. And the practicable part about that is that it does translate into relationships. It re translates into other communication. And, and it, But the first thing that somebody has to be aware of is, am I putting a reality distortion field in front of the communication coming in and just clouding that message with some interpretation of judgment from the beginning. Instead of just saying, yes, and yes, that's the yes part. The and of the yes and is to help the other person by giving them something to chew on back, to give them a positive message back and a, a some material to play with. Um, the way I explain it sometimes is building a Lego sculpture together. This yes and we're building a sculpture, Lego sculpture together. But you cannot take, pick up a brick and put it on yourself. You have to be given a brick from your partner first and you accept it in your hand and then you choose where to put it on the sculpture. That's the yes part. You've given me a brick and I'm going to use it on my sculpture. And then the second part of the yes and is the and, and that's picking up a brick and giving it to your partner to use in whatever capacity they want to put it on this on the the uh, sculpture. I'm not directing them to put it on here, put it on here, put it on top of what I just said or anything like that. The yes and is absolute acceptance and gifting back to keep the scene rolling and to keep collaboration happening. So that's that's one of the first principles. Excellent. And I think you highlighted something there and I, something that I took away as well is the end. And we, we were always talking about with improv, the partner putting them in the best situation That's right. or give, gifting them something that it put them in the best light or, yep. um, and giving them the, the, the best situation to proceed always. Um, and can you elaborate on that? It's sure. something that I, that I really took away that was, was helpful for me. Yeah, in in that yes and and it all of these blend together. So so like I said, not one is more important than the other. But one of the principles that's very important is making your partner look better than you. There that not bringing my agenda into the scene. Like I want this scene to be about this, 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 and this. I want it to be here, here, and here. And then you push your agenda. And anybody probably can know when they're being sold a bill of goods. You know when some when somebody's a little too pushy on their agenda you feel it right away it's like i'm being pressured into this thing right so make your partner look better than you or feel better about it and, and it's empathetic play is what i call it so so you know you, you have to be empathetic about the other person's needs and wants in the scene or conversation or meeting or whatever and try to elevate their position in the dynamic that we have I call it an us-ness. 
It's not me and you talking right now. We're talking and everybody listening is part of our us-ness right now. If they're involved and not judging and gumming along with it, they're part of our us-ness in a timeless manner. No matter when they see this, they're still part of us. That's presence. So always elevating our partners or elevating the people we're communicating to, to an equal and even more important status, you know, and, and, and I can't do it without you. So that's the collaboration. Otherwise I'm talking to my, a wall. So that's how I believe about that empathetic communication. Yeah. It, sometimes it, what we were, I was just listening to something today. We were talking about the, we need to have empathy in, in communication and as well as when we're servicing somebody or a client in those situations, we need to, um, to be able to direct the conversation to where we want to move to. And also because a lot of times it's pretty, if we're asking, if we're giving service to somebody, they are, they don't know where we're going. So having empathy and being able to direct them in a way that's going to be most beneficial for them is, is really helpful. And it's kind of what we're saying here too, is, is being empathetic as well as giving them clear, a clear path so they can be less fearful about mm -hmm. what's happening next. We also have to right. find our, our collaborative objectives. You know, there, there's an objective that, that we all have. So, I mean, if, if, a, if, a, if a client comes into you, they have an objective, they have a sort of an expectation and, and you have an expectation as, or, or, you know, everybody has an, a kind of an expectation, but it's flavored by their own m strategies and motivations. And it, instead of saying, how do we get to our common expectations and fulfillment of this innovation together? Um, we, we, we elevate the other person to get there. So it's a great, it's a great place to lead anything. You know, coaching is all about that. Having somebody else find the answer themselves within them to get where we're going, you know, to have a, a common solution to what we're doing. There are going to be cases where you have to present to somebody else something that they're not necessarily going to want to agree with perhaps, or need to change. But how can we be as, as empathetic and gentle as possible to find that common goal to elevate them up to where we need to be knowing your objective cool. and knowing their objective so that's one tenant yeah, yes end and then is there is there we've another covered tenant we've covered two to okay, we've, yes we've covered and then two. end yes okay. and and also make your partner look better than yourself make, make your better that's look, definitely okay. that's definitely one of the one of those tenants and practices and principles yeah so uh so going on to that, you know, the yes and to make your partner look better is focus and awareness, focus and awareness. That is one of our, that's why mindfulness plays such an important role. So you have to, in any conversation, you know, if, if you've got mindset of what's going on after this, you know, that we're going to have, you got to have a meeting after this and you're thinking about it. We're not part of the usness anymore. You're part of the you in your head and me talking, you know what I'm saying? So if you, if somebody is not able to take their little pinpoint of attention and know where they're focused and be completely aware of what's going on in the situation, then, um, communi actual solid communication can't happen. It will, it has to be, we have to find that, you know, collaboration of attention and focus to be able to uh, move forward. So a lot of times we don't know when we're not focused. Talked about anosognosia. It's not knowing that you don't know that you're not focused, but you, once you get into your default mode network, your mind starts talking to itself. You disappear from the usness of the conversation and you go into your own head. So being hyper aware of that, being able to know, oh, sh I just stepped out of my focus and awareness between us, and I've been gone into my own head. Then I, if I'm aware of that, I can jump back. I can change the channels on the remote very quickly in my mind to decide where I'm going to go. So improv is huge, fun practice of where we're focused and what we're aware of. And we practice games to catch each other not being focused. And we trick each other's minds to go, oh, were we distracted or were we being able to, to double focus? And, and that is, you know, that metacognition aspect is knowing, think thinking about thinking or knowing what you're thinking about that can, that takes practice. Some people are good at it. Um, other people need work at it. So focus and awareness are, are and that is another one. I love this. I love this, right? This is so interesting. This is so great because it, may, it, it dovetails into to what we, we do all the time. And as, as 
scales people, right? And so we're, we're practicing, practicing, practicing to get better at the conversation, to be able to, to help people more and maneuver things that would actually help them and help us as well in, in collaboration, like what you're saying. Yeah. And in business people as well, you know, just we're, that's, that's what, that's what it is. I mean, we're offering help and service in a way that can benefit us and as well as collaboration and better yeah. in the other, other yeah, person and fa- too. family situations too. You know, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, like, you know, family relationships and, and, and making sure your children are heard and, and, you know, whether it's leadership or man, it, it, it's just re teaching us, oh, stop running our own agendas and start listening to what the other person's saying. And I cut you off. So I was, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. And, and, it, and through practice, like the cool, the great news is, is that we can practice this and we can get better at it. And as we practice things slow down and we could just get better and just get better as long as we're we're um agreeing to and and willing to be a willing p- participant in the whole the whole game then um we can get better and and it, but practice practice makes us better so cool, cool. i want to back out um further out of this and um because i something that came up for me and it was really helpful the interpretation that you posed for what is communication and we talked about it was like the A B in the mm-hmm. communication, and like ultimately, like like what is communication? Like why do we even talk to each other? And um, right. and and for what reason? Right. So, can you elaborate more on your interpretation of what communication actually is? And when we when we are aware of what our objective is, our common goals, or what we're after, um, then it helps us precisely to send the best message to the receiver, because the rejection of your message, you're not getting what you want. A lot of times, people blame that on the receiver of the message. They didn't listen to me. They blah, blah, they 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 did this. They did that. They didn't. They said no or whatever it is. However. In my opinion, it's a it's based on how the message is sent. It's it's how well received the message is in their ego shell, their bubble, to be able to be the less offensive and just be able to seep in for them to be able to go, oh, okay, I can process this and I'll respond in a way that is not reactionary. It's not a reaction. It's a response that they can give that's more uh, thought, I don't want to say thought out, but it, it's more um, composed than the message that you get back of a reaction, a no. Uh, you, you can hit somebody real hard with something or send a message too quietly. You might not say it loud enough and it's not going to be received, or you might say it too forcefully, or you might have your agenda so loud in your head that it bounces off their their wall and you're not going to get what you want back. So that that's the A to B method. The sender of the message has to be very conscious, very focused and present, and and listening with their eyes and ears at the at the person who they're sending the message to to make sure that that message is received, understood, and then if we don't get back what we want, we don't send the same message again and again. It's not going to be received. So if we send the message and it's not. Our objective is not met. We're not getting what we had originally intended to. In my opinion, the sender then needs to reevaluate how they messaged across and try a different strategy, compose something different out of loving kindness and empathy for the other person, not saying that guy's wrong, but that guy's right. You can't penetrate their shell if we're in that disagreement with each other. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Messages are not going to be received. But if you 
empathetically understand what they're, where they're coming from by listening to them, listening to their risk, their reaction back or their, what they say back, then we're, then we're listening and we're responding instead of reacting. And that's the, one of the other principles of improv is that listening and responding instead of reacting. So if we could be better senders of message messages, we should also practice being better receiver, the B huh. on that. So, so both, both are to blame, if you will say blame is put on anybody about not getting your messages conveyed, but most people blame the other guy. No, nobody wants to, you, you know, nobody wants to take the blame for the fact that the communication didn't go well. So how we do that is be aware of listening and responding. That's another one that we practice with improv. That's another principle. So we've got the yes and, the listening, the responding, focus and awareness, and we've also got the empathetic play or the empathetic communication. That's great. So li listening and responding, techniques around getting better at listening and responding, because that's huge, right? Uh, in my own life, I can see it. I'm sure in everybody's uh, life, it, it works the same. Um, so regarding... like. A message coming at us. Let's talk about that. Like, uh, something coming at us. It's it's just not landing correctly. Whatever. Getting some space in between us re reacting instead of responding. Yeah. What are some things that are practiced within improv um, that could help with aiding somebody with being less reactive when something a message comes back or um, maybe I know that we there's some games that we use play. I would mm -hmm. let's get into that as well. I think to, okay. to kind of practice this sort of thing. But is what is something that we can use to sit back and instead of reacting, but respond ra rather than in a way that is is helpful. One of the games that is kind of a new flavor of game we just came up with, which is even, we we play so many, but all these games evolve all the time. New ideas come up, and so new games come up. But one of the games that uh, we just I just came up with it not so long ago is to that you play with the rule. The parameter is to respond to whatever was given to you with the expression, you know, you're right. You know, you're right. And then the response being, and I feel, or, and I think, so whatever question comes, whatever statement comes like, you know, you're right. And then blah, 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 blah add to it. And then go, and I think, or I feel, and that will carry on an improv scene, but it's it's with this practice of the structure, it's getting us to go, yes. Yes, I hear what you're saying. You know you're right, and adding more details to it. You know you're right, that, that da 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 And even, there's even ways to take it in a different direction. And I feel that if we did this, this may happen. That's why I'm not saying no. I'm never saying no. I'm saying, you know, you're right. I can see that, da, 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 and you're given that. And then you respond with, and I think. So that's a game that we would set up with partners, with two people facing each other, and it, it, either in a scene or in a circle, you could do that. And somebody says, you know, I think cats are great. And you, and you would respond, you know, I think you're right. Cats are some of the best animals to play with. And I had it, and I think that we should get a cat together. You know what I'm saying? And that makes oh. that makes the scene move right. And it goes, I, you know, I think you're right. We should get a cat together because we've been getting along so well and it adds more flavor and meat to the bones. And I think we should go to the pet store. And they go, yes, you know, you're right. We should go to the pet store because buying things, you know, privately in those boxes in front of the publics is not the best place to go. You know, anyway, you're just adding and adding and adding. And the scene doesn't break down because you're building First of all, on what the, the last thing the other person said, and you're building on that. So that's just one game. There's just tons of games like that. Yeah, that's great. And then, and then through that yes, through that space of saying yes, it gives you time to to respond instead of react, right? So it's, and so yes, and and then you it's, kind of you. It's, it's, it's even beyond yes, yes. Huh? You, you, you know, you're, yes, right. you're right. You're, you're right. right. Yeah, it's it's beyond that. It goes, you know. You know you are so right. You know you're so right, and then you then you give that active listening back. You know you're so right, and you kind of repeat what the other person says. And you know you're so right about the, uh, what, what you said, and you can add some juice and flavor to it. That's still the yes part. I've heard you, and I've heard you enough that you know that you've been heard, and and so that is one of the biggest things that people want. They just want to be heard 
first of yeah. all. Yeah, and it's it's so much of breaking patterns. Like, and I think those games that you play, it's so interesting because as as you we start talking this way, and you're saying yes, and you know you're right. It's yeah. it, these are just you know there's patterns that we establish over time through that we're conditioned through um, from our kids or just from being friends or people around that we we respond in a certain way, and working through practice and and through improv or just through role playing. Right. and games and play the practice of play we are reconditioning the patterns in our brain to in those those three tenants or those tenants that we're talking about in in a way that's more positive yeah. towards the recipient and in a way and ultimately it's going to probably it's the whole thing is to be to bring more joy and positivity and happiness and yep. uh vit- vitality and everything to our lives that 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 we're all looking for uh and it's so it's such a uh, i'm it's such a great thing, like this through communication now, all that can, how, how much impact this can have on our, on our, our well-being and, and yeah. who we are. It changes, it moves, it moves the scales of, of what we are normally conditioned to do. M- most of the time we haven't, pra- uh, I'm going to say most people haven't practiced it, but people who are good at it mostly had that talent. They're the talent, <laughs> you know, the talent, but sometimes talent doesn't work hard and you know, the, the hard work pays off with it beats talent when talent doesn't work hard so it, it no matter whether we're good at it naturally or we need work on it it just moves the scales a little bit farther into the what we really want department i don't think anybody goes i want well some people might but i want to just be the, the main ruler of the universe or whatever most people want happiness you know and and the collaboration between uh, the groups, a- avoiding conflict, um, can usually move the scales of happiness up some. Um, our egos get happy, and I, I mean get fed, I should say, by conflict. So the more egotistical we are, we feed off this negative and conflict energy um, to make our egos feel better, but it doesn't move us into contentment and happiness. It just moves us into rightness. I'm yes. right, righteous and dignity. I'm right and everybody else is wrong. More people are practicing that than they are practicing contentment and happiness. So that's going to be their go-to reflexive reaction is ego protection and ego building versus collaborative innovation and contentment and happiness. Just because we're not practicing it as much. I love that. We're not focused as much on it. And know? we can, and I'm, I'm assuming that you would agree with this. It's the pulling the ego out of it, the rightness, so to speak, that like you were saying, and, and moving forward with collaboration and, and with putting that in the forefront, we can have both. We can have, well, we can have what we want. Someone else can have, we can, through collaboration, they can have what they want. Yeah. And we can, and both people, everybody, this usness, we can all be collaborative and happy and give what we want together is not this it's not one versus everybody else sure. it's or, or and, and, we and it's all... not all the time and it's not all the time it's just a little more you know i mean it's not this common it's not this uh shining light you know shining guide of enlightenment like i'm going to reach this place where it happens all the time we're playing games we're we're constantly playing the game sometimes we're going to make the shot and sometimes our ego is going to take it and and we're going to go the wrong way with the ball um, but with practice, we will be better at playing the game of communication, the game, which is, it, it's a, it's, if, if one thinks about it this way, this is my opinion, play is different than work because it doesn't necessarily have a goal other than to play and to be happy in the play work. We have a comment we have a, I need money. I need this, I need power, I need this, need, 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 need. There's an expectation at the end of it. Whereas the only expectation of good collaborative play and happiness is to make more collaborative play and happiness and joy in whatever we do. So if that becomes our primary focus of staying present and elevating the other people up, no matter what we're doing, it moves the scale of contentment and happiness up just a little bit. Not that it's going to not that that's the way I'm, I'm not looking for that to be the final answer. It just moves the scale more and more. And then you, you feel better about it. You know, it's, it's not down the road. Uh, there, there's an expression I like 
one of my expressions is you get there by being here. So, you know, anytime somebody says, I want to be there, I want that to happen down the road. The only way you can get to there is to be, be present and be here. So you yeah. get there by being here. Can you talk about, can you explain that a little bit more? I think I understand it. So it's, so the idea is it's not like, um, you're, we're all in play. We're going for collaboration, happiness, all this sort of stuff. Uh, however, in work, there is things that we have to do. Um, that is not always with that intention in mind, I guess. Maybe that's what you're saying. But but what by practicing and being inside of that play of of collaboration and and putting the other person in the best light, all of that stuff through t- time, we're moving the scale a little bit closer to that being the main that that being a part of the the goal of work as well, or in in, in totality. Yeah. Is that it, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just think of how many times people get stuck in their head and they're unhappy about something because they're stuck in their head thinking about the goals, the expectations that are p- imposed upon them instead of bringing it back to the, the present where you can actually start making practicable improvement in the present moment to get us closer to the work goal, if you will. You know, yes, there's things down the road in, in, in the future to achieve but you get there better by mm. making the steps and being present and focused on the, the nowness versus trying to imagine myself already there. I mean, yeah, you do that at the same time. You know, I imagine myself already there, but I'm doing it present and I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm playing with that. If you've ever, and you're able to turn on a dime, you're able to switch your, your uh, remote control very quickly. If things get too intense, you're able to bring some levity to it. You know, you're, you're able to, to break this aggressive energy pattern of conflict. Do we know when conflict is starting enough to diffuse it before it even starts? Or when we have gotten into conflict, are we able to diffuse it and find the common goals and collaboration once we become conscious of the conflict? You know, it's about being that present and conscious of what where the whole scene is going. So when we talk about improv, you know, we practice scenes. Some of them are going to be funny. It, a, a practiced improviser knows how to direct a scene and the audience down a path of expectation. And you take them in a different expectation. And that's usually funny. But not knowing where you are in the scene um, and not knowing how your character is feeling and the other characters feeling and how th- reading the room, if you will, how they're feeling it, it you have to actually be able to feel that and know where we stand at the, this present moment with everybody's level of agreement. Does huh. that make sense? Huh. It does. It does. Yeah, absolutely. And so with regards to practicing and playing more and, and role playing, playing games, um, and work, uh, how would you suggest doing that? I mean, obviously you, you can you, either, you could um, practice with others, you know, have a, cr- create a, a group of people that, you, and, and go and search for games and to practice and play um, uh, as a team, as a, a corporation, as a, as a culture of, of, of people or friends um, or, or, or I guess improv classes, you know, sure. You could, you could do that as well, but, What's a good way for someone to, I mean, I guess we can always get, we can in the moment, always be practicing, like kind of what you just said, is always be present, always be practicing, be always have the intention of, of getting better and working towards that goal. Um, but how would you say you would recommend someone to, to be able to practice and get associated with this sort of thing? Sure. There, there's kind of two different practice. Well, there's more than two, but uh, the two main ones are practicing your own personal mind, mindfulness, you know, uh, practicing your breathing, practicing how, how you're breathing brings you back into the, it brings you back into a state of being able to think about what you're thinking and do what you're doing. So a mindfulness practice is always a good way to get an understanding of what's going on in your internal dialogue. Okay. That's only one of the channels that we're on um, in a, during a day. <laughs> we're in that channel actually a lot. Because that's our default mode network. Our default mode network is hardwired in our brain to go into uh, 
thinking about the past and thinking about the future and what I can do better in the future. And that's that internal dialogue that's giving ourselves a hard time about this, blaming things on other people. It's anytime we're ruminating and going on and, and, and collaborate. We're not collaborating at that point. I call it meditative innovation. In, in other words, it's inside our own practice, inside our own skulls and inside our own ego that we're practicing that. Now that mindful meditation is great, but we don't all live on the top of a mountain somewhere by ourselves, right? So that, that is only one of the practices is to be aware of our thoughts and our, and our stuff. And, and so when we hear in meditation, we hear a stimulus and are we focused on it? Or are we just aware of it? You know, we might attune to it and then we can catch ourselves being, ah, I just left the meditation, the peacefulness of the present, and I'm focused on that thing. And I'm starting to think about what it is, you know, but being aware of what's going on inside of our mind when it's going on is a way to practice by yourself. It's called, med I call it meditative innovation or meditative creativity, whatever. So the other way is anytime you're with anybody else, you have a choice to be this neutral, okay person. I'm okay, you're okay. That's another philosophy is back in the, in the 70s, you know, this, this, I'm just getting information back and forth and, and we're two actors that are just talking, you're just acting. We're, we're, not, we're not in this moment playing a role, but knowing when we do switch into playing a role. So that's gotta be our, I'm sorry about this. Sorry, my phone rang. <laughs> um, <laughs> be, being able to switch that, to switch that mindset quickly into the awareness that we'd begun playing a role. So with friends, you, you could play games with friends, awareness games with friends. You could take some improv games and play with those. Um, but you can also practice any time you're communicating. Once you know some of these games and techniques, you can play them kind of all the time. I mean, once you're aware that, oh my gosh, I reacted instead of responded, you're, you're practicing. You're, play, <laughs> you're playing these, these games of self-control or, or aware, awareness practices with other people to know when we've been, been using a, a, triggered by somebody's statements and, and why we've been triggered by them. So, you know, those, those are great ways to practice. I, of course, I'm always pushing that somebody take an improv class. If, if, if people haven't taken an improv class, you know, I just kind of say, why, what is, or why not? What is stopping you from taking an improv class? A lot of people don't take improv classes because they think I'm not funny. I'm not fast, or I'm just scared. And those are the best reasons to take the, the improv class because they're not going to, they're going to teach. It's not what improv is about, but you've got to face your fears. You've got to jump in because we learn better from our mistakes and facing our fears than we do by just blowing it off and saying, I'm not going to do it. So just taking an improv class is a great way to, to dip your toe in the water. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so it's interesting, right? When, when someone mentioned it to me, like, Hey, you should try improv, like, or just mentioned that uh, Dave did it before and you should try it. This would be a fun thing to do. So I took him up on it and, and tried it. And, uh, I, I think a lot of people, I don't know, at least it was from my, my own experience that I had no idea what improv what it was i had no idea i knew it was in help i mean it was about communication i knew it was like comedy right i like yeah cop like i've seen like whose line is it anyway on tv yep and um ho however i never realized how it, it basically it, it was what you're what you're saying i, I mean there's so much more to it and and how it ultimately is just it's almost it's like the art of communication right yeah. of and how it's it's so helpful and how it it's a holistic idea of communication, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good way for me to, a way for me to say it. But I, um, yeah, right. I, I I think that's I think. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say you you yeah, are taking right. a, taking it, a class like that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm I'm sorry. I, I was going to say you, you were right <laughs> about that. It, it, it's it is opening people. Um, it, it has depth to it, but some people don't want to do it for that reason. If some people want to just come in and play, they can get that out of it. You know, and then get the play part of it out of it too. But th there is a depth of communication that goes on, and it depends on where you go too. So some facilitators might um, focus on just doing games, and and it's just purely for for fun, and that's fine. I, I think that there's a way to do both where you integrate it and and learn about it. You know, does it become work or is it play? There's the balance of both. You know, there's a balance. You get you get better at practicing things, but 
you know, not everybody's doing it, like doing it for the reason I want to perform. Well, that's makes it more work or I doing it just because I want to get better at communication. That makes our objective kind of an expectation instead of going in with an open mind and maybe saying, maybe I'll learn something. Maybe there's a potential of stuff instead of a, a, a wholehearted expl expectation. Because most people come in with an expectation. I usually ask them what their expectation is. And it'd be great if I meet everybody's expectations. But I like to see when they go, oh, I expected this. And it was completely different. And I'm okay with that. Because most times we are disappointed and we suffer when our expectations are not met. That's what suffering is. We have expectations and they're not met. But in improv, you may have an expectation. It's different. And you're like, wow. I learned something completely different and I got a better result than my expectations. And that's, that's so small. That's so, in yeah, that's so, that's so cool. So suffering is expecting something and not getting it, what we expected, uh, yeah. having an expectation and not being fulfilled by that expectation. Yeah. That's, that's so, well, that's, I never heard that before. I, I'd like to way. take credit for um, it, but that's Buddhism. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> you know, um, so I, I, I uh, when I, I came, you know, obviously, you, you know, I, I, we run a real estate team. I'm a realtor. Um, I, and, and when I came and took the course, I was, I was thinking, um, you know, I was, my expectation is I wanted to get better with communication and I wanted to have more freedom of expression, get out of my, the world of my mind and, and, and be okay with just being who I was and, and messing up and like, and I, and it helped me so much with that getting out of my the world of mind and just being okay you were great with, in that class that. You, know, and you, I, you were you were great in that class too I, I really enjoyed you being in there and you came in with an open mind and and that's really what it takes is yeah to, yeah you come in with an open mind and 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 things can come in and and so anyway i didn't mean to cut you off but i, I yeah, appreciate but, but, you I, but I, I took yeah absolutely yeah it was, it was great and then uh, i would highly recommend anybody taking what if I, I recommend you and we, let's talk about where how how we get how they can get in touch with you and and I'm not even sure if you're doing if you're doing virtual classes let's talk about that too but I also th I also saw the utility of of your your teachings and and in your your interpretation of improv and communication with regards to team building uh, I think it was even before you mentioned it that you do it like and I know that you you have that you do do that as well for for large companies but. Um, and with regards to communication, team building, culture, like corporate environments, I, I, yeah. I mean, it was very easy for me to start to see, I mean, I guess, because that's kind of the world that I live in, to see the utility of what, you, what you're doing to develop that, that glue and between um, teams and cultures. And so that I wanted to get my team associated with just being a part of that, playing those games and having you come in and work with us. So I guess my, my thought uh, here is I want you to kind of sh share how can other people um, utilize you and get in contact with you and um, on, on, and how can how do you how can they get access to your to, okay. to your help? Yeah, uh, to, to get in touch with me, I'm pretty easy. You can um, you can email me at the improvised now at gmail dot com. So the improvised now at gmail.com no periods no spaces just all together the improvised now with a d on the end. improvised now so you can get just email me at and i'll respond i got a website that, that's uh the improvised now.com and that'll take you to my my other business website i've just tacked on a quick little page on that um so that's how you can so you can get in touch with me if, if it's interesting Classes are interesting. I also perform at Funky Dog Improv in O'Galley, downtown O'Galley. So they also give corporate, you know, give classes. And I teach a lot of individuals at Funky Dog um, Improv. And that's funkydogfl.com. And we do shows there every Saturday night from 7 to 9. We do a fun and games show, which is just like uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Um, so... That, that's a fun night out, you know, it's a 48 seat little theater, uh, kind of a cabaret style theater where they can come see a show and not have to think about, I got to learn this or whatever, but just watch how it's played. Watch people who practice it get to play on stage 
and, and, and see people have fun by doing this mindless play, but you get something out of it. You get entertained, but you also go, oh, I, I, it's, I see what we, what Kras is talking about in practice. So Funky Dog Improv is another place to go. So it's funkydogfl.com. And uh, I wanted to touch on the last one of the principles or practices of improv. We talked about Please. the yes and. We talked about focus and awareness. We talked about listening and responding. And we talked talk about making your partner better, improve your partner, make, you know, make, not make them better, but give them the best, make them look better than yourself, right? The, the next one um, is there are no mistakes, no judgment. It, it, if, if something unexpected happens, it's part of the isness of what's going on. You integrate it into the scene. You make things that are challenging and difficult and considered wrong, not wrong, by adapting that into the reality of the scene. So mistakes we learn from it. The mistakes are challenges and opportunities. That's that's all they are. So so we we utilize that as one of the principles of improv. And then of course the last one or wrapped into this is to play and have fun. We go around this universe, depending on who you live by. This life is a shorter than shorter than we think it is. But if we're not enjoying ourselves and playing and having fun. In some capacity, we might be missing out on a really good chance in our existence to be able to do that. So that that that's basically my rundown of the principles and practices of improv. That's excellent. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So yeah, it's just always making sure that we're having fun in whatever we're doing, not take ourselves too serious. Um, that's that's great. That's a great. That's, um, well, Kras, I I really appreciate your time. Um, I want to bring you on here. I think there's so much value here. I'm, I'm so excited to share this podcast with everybody. Um, I think it's like a, a hidden gem here. And I think everybody can really benefit from this. Uh, so I'm so excited to share that, share with you, with, with our, um, with our crowd, with our audience. And um, again, we'll probably, I'll probably touch base with you maybe sometime and I'd love to have you back on. And um, I would love to, and I'm going to, I'm gonna gonna be a part of those classes again. I think just getting involved and and role playing more and and being inside the practice and and playing um, is is just always always worthwhile. So, thanks so much. Thanks for ha thanks for being here, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>